Every week when a new review drops, a new poll drops at the same time. The 1972 poll has just dropped, which includes Lone Wolf and Cub, Sleuth, The Night Stalker, and The Mechanic. All four movies I'm really interested in seeing, but it's up to you guys to choose which one I do end up seeing. Now let's talk about... Shut! Damn right. The man that would risk his neck for his brother, man. Shut! Can you dig it? Who's the cat that won't cop out when there's danger all about? Shaft. Yo, Shaft is incredible. The soulful vibe of this movie transports me to a place that I've never been before, but feels like home. Isaac Hayes' opening ballad in the beginning of the movie just really sets the tone of everything that you're going to be experiencing. It just puts you in a good space emotionally and mentally. Like, it's just so dope. Music can really do that for you. And honestly, I could talk the next 10 minutes about this intro, but we don't have that type of time. The story's pretty simple. Detective John Shaft is hired by gangster Bumpy Jameson, which I think is a play on Bumpy Johnson from back in the day to find his kidnapped daughter who he initially says he doesn't know who took her. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> this becomes complicated for Shaft when you realize that this is not a police sanctioned mission. Police don't know anything about this. They're trying to poke him proud about it but they can't get anything out of Shaft. You know it might help if I knew what Bumpy hired you for. Never said he did. He did. It's my ethics to uh, say yes or no, Vic. He put you on the spot, Chef. He did. You're very wise Caucasian, Vic. He's as cool as a cucumber in the situation. He ain't gonna give up no information that he don't wanna give up. So that's the adventure that we're going on with Chef throughout the runtime of this movie. What we get out of this setup is one of the greatest characters in film history. I really believe that. So now let's talk about Shaft. <laughs> Shaft, played by Richard Roundtree, who's 28 in this movie. When we have conversations about people back in the day looking way older than their age, Richard Roundtree fits this mold. This man was 28. Look at me. I'm 33. And then look at Richard Roundtree at 28. He looks like he could be my father. It's insane. Shaft is a beautifully written, well-rounded character. One of the things that stuck out to me was the everyday madness of Shaft. He takes a train. He doesn't drive a fancy car. He tries to catch a cab. The cab passes him by. Everyone in the neighborhood he interacts with, he treats with dignity and respect. Hey, what's happening, buddy? Same old uh, sixes and sevens, Shaft. Two guys were, were, were looking for you. Like, that minutes ago. Yeah, Arlen how should I know? Everybody looks the same to me. <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. Take care, Shaft. The best part of his character is his intelligence and his cleverness. Everyone tries to trap him, especially the mafia, but he can't be caught because he's always outthinking his opponents. What the hell is this? <laughs> Two sweet guesses. And you, Shaft. But your lovely self it is. And I'm ready. Can you dig it? You got troubles? I got what you want. Where are you? The no name bar in the village. On Jane Street. What do you want me to do? All your beautiful self down here. How many of them are there? Uh, about two. I'll close up to we'll go over to my pad. Hell, you walk in that front door and I'll close up right now. I'll have a car there in a few seconds. That's what I want to hear, baby. Where are my manners? I didn't even introduce myself to you gentlemen. My name is John Shaft. Freeze.
Now, you'll see in a lot of movies, there's a sensationalized version, especially of an action star, where they're quipping and doing everything no matter who they're interacting with. So when you're watching this movie and he's interacting with Bumpy Jameson, he's not taking any stuff from him. And you compare that to the way that he just interacts with a kid on the street. So many characters that we see, it doesn't matter what the context is. They're the exact same character doing the exact same thing. The dynamics of who we are shows itself in different situations. This character has that in spades. But let's talk about some other things about this movie that I love as well. The music in this movie is such a vibe as the kids say these days. I was in such a groove listening to this groovy music that I really just didn't want it to end. And the winner is... Isaac Hayes theme from Shaq. And there's one last examination I want to make about this movie. This movie is a great example of how the discussion of race and social issues can be had through actions rather than just talking points. Every once in a while, Shaft will interact with a character, even such as his boss, where there'll be a conversation where race kind of becomes the center of it, but in a genuine way in which the characters are expressing their genuine views about one another that are obviously coming from their experience in life. And it happens during real conversation. The movie doesn't just stop to do this. It's a part of the narrative that's pushing the movie forward. We know it's not the Panthers or the Young Lords, but something's on the boil, John. I just want to know what it is before we need an ad machine to start counting up the bodies. Bumpy wants you for something. He knows what's going on. And that's what I want to know. Not who, just what. Well, it was my black card to see you so concerned about us minority folks. Oh, come on, Chef. What is it with this black shit? Huh? You ain't so black. You ain't so white, baby. I'm not asking you to sell out. Just tell me the name of the game so I know the rules. The film also doesn't ignore the subject of Shaft being a black cop in a black neighborhood in which cops are not viewed as allies. We put in a lot of street time together. You know, that was a long time back. I don't know you no more. A lot of hard years, man. You know anything about the kidnapping? Okay, Tom, used up your minute. Get out! Don't tell me, man. They're viewed as adversaries. They're viewed as bullies a lot of times, especially in the 70s, where even if you're innocent, the very presence of police can cause unease. He's called an Uncle Tom. He's called all other kinds of names by other characters in the story, in which you would actually legitimately understand where they're coming from. And at the same time, Shaft has to reconcile that these people legitimately feel this way about him because of the role that he's taken in society. So yeah, overall, I give Shaft four stars. It's a great movie. I really enjoy my time in this world it's a simplistic story with a ton of layers that you can explore and man that opening sequence is probably the best i've ever seen in a movie i'm i'm not even joking with you so yeah what did you think of the review are you interested in seeing shaft now that i've talked about it or have you already seen it let me know what your thoughts are on the movie in general and as i mentioned at the top of the video in the description is a link for the community post at the conclusion of this video, go and vote for the 1972 movie, which has a lot of interesting choices in it. But for right now, I want you guys to stay and check out the intro to the movie Shaft.
I'm timepiece, brother. Goodbye. That's a sex machine to all the chicks. Shut! Damn right. Who is the man that would risk his neck for his brother, man? Shut! Can you dig it? Can't be one cup out when there's danger all about. Shop! Right on. You say this cat is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm talking about Sharon. Then we can dig it. He's a complicated man, but no one understands him but his woman. John Shaft. Hey, what's happening, buddy? Same old uh, sixes and sevens, Shaft. Two guys looking for you. Uh, like 10 minutes ago. Harlem Cats? How in the hell should I know? Everybody looks the same to me. <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. Take care, Shaft.